We're on our way to the Low Country, which encompasses a 200 mile stretch spanning from coastal South Carolina to Georgia. Low Country cuisine draws parallels to its Creole cousin in Louisiana with a bit of a twist and a heavier African influence. So you're gonna see in a minute that Charleston is a walking city, a very beautiful walking city as a matter of fact. Lots of tours, either by horse or on foot. After a busy day walking and shopping, we popped into Hannibal's Kitchen. According to their byline, it's where the locals hang out. Our very first stop in Charleston is to get something to eat. So we stopped at a place that was highly recommended. It's called Hannibal's Soul Kitchen. It's black owned. Um, they do a lot of good things in the community and I heard really good things about their crab rice and their okra soup, which are two um, foodstuffs that are really native to South Carolina. So I look forward to trying it and telling you guys how it really tastes. This crab rice was delicious. Like most Gullah dishes, it's seafood base with rice as a great filler. Soups that contain okra are commonly referred to as gumbo. This was probably a corruption of the name for okra from the Congo area of Africa, where it was called king gumbo. Gullah okra soup is akin to the gumbo you might have eaten in Louisiana. However, it has a tomato base instead of the roux that you would expect. If you're asking how the food was, here's the answer. We went about one hour north of Charlestown to Georgetown, South Carolina. While there, we visited the Rice Museum and the Gullah Museum. We asked the locals for some recommendations for places to eat, and Ani's Country Kitchen came up. So that's where we went. The menu at Ani's is written on their chalkboard daily. They have a wide variety of entrees, sides, and desserts if you have space. You can order something as simple as fried chicken or get more adventurous and try their pig feet pilaf. I was most interested in the red rice, another Gullah dish of West African origin, very similar to the rice dishes of Senegambia and West African jollof rice. Our last stop is about two hours south we're heading over the bridge to the seat of Gullah culture, St. Helena Island. Gullah Grub is a family owned restaurant known for their authentic Gullah dishes. I learned that the Gullah eat in season to protect the ecosystem and maintain balance. You won't see them eating oysters until the months that end in R. That's September to December. This prevents over harvesting and gives the oyster beds time to replenish themselves. Be sure to have a swamp thing if you're thirsty. Also, try the she crab soup. It's definitely an authentic Gullah delicacy. Until next time, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. We'll see you the next time as we head to Tuskegee, Alabama for more Black History Travel.